peace be with you. This is Ben Thompson, and I am a free citizen of America. Today, we are going to talk about the subject of kings, as described by the Bible. Now, there are two philosophies that are contradictory, and the two cannot exist together. There are free men or people who believe in liberty, then there are king men or people who believe in a hierarchical leadership. Now, the Bible declares that the free men or the liberty, people who believe in liberty, is the Lord's way. Now how does the Bible describe this? There's several ways, but we're going to focus on kings. Because the truth is, under the, the system of thought in the, in the Bible and Torah, every man is a king. And why is that? That is because we are all descendants of Adam, who was the first king and first man. And as his descendants, we are all princes and kings unto ourselves. Now, when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, they were slaves and the Egyptians had a hierarchical system of kings, or as they called them, pharaohs. And that is what they understand, and so they were treating Moses as a king. But when Moses' father-in-law Jethro saw this, he says, this is no good. And Jethro was a high priest of Midian, a, a prophet of the Lord. and. Jethro helped Moses to see the right way that the Lord had established things. And that, w and that way is that he set up a system of judges. Now, the reason for this is, is to have a system of judges is that all men are equal before God because we are all kings. And we, are all, we all have free domain under our, under our property or of our property. Now, in the book of Judges, chapter 17, verse 6, it describes um, that there was no kings in Israel. It says, In those days there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. And people were able to do that, to do whatever that, what was right in their own eyes, because there was no king. There was no centralized authority. Now, they had a law, which was the Torah, and they had judges, as Moses set up. Now, if you, if you violated the Torah, the judges would judge you, and you would be condemned under the Torah or the law. And this is the system that the founders restored to the world. That we have a law, and we have judges, and if you violate the law, the judges will judge you, and you'll be condemned as the law describes. Now under a system of kings, the king determines what is law, and what is not law. There's no set law. And the king may execute the law as he sees fit. Now, Israel's sin, although they were many, is found in this underlying thought when they sought for a king. And in 1 Samuel, Chapter 8, it describes the conversation that Samuel, the people, and the Lord had 
about the subject of a king, because the Lord is supposed to be the king over man. Because there's not supposed to be a man to be king over other men, because we are all equal before God. Therefore, the Lord is our king, and we are subjects unto him. And we are, and we ourselves may have dominion over our whatever the Lord has given to us to have dominion over. And we are not supposed to have dominion over each other, except in cases where men violate the law, as God has given, and are to be judged by judges according to the law. And it is a very set and established system that cannot be altered. Now, this is what happened in 1 Samuel chapter 8, starting in verse 4. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together, and came to Samuel unto Ramah, and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel, when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. Now therefore hearken unto their voice, howbeit yet protest solemnly unto them, and shew them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. So, the, the sin that Israel had, that was the underlying sin under everything, and all their evil works that they did, the idea was that they wanted to be like the nations around them. And so they rejected God as the king, and they, rege and they rejected the idea that all men are kings and equal, and they, they wanted to have a man as a king over them and they would all be subject to that man and they do whatever he says now the lord rejected this idea but said to the prophet samuel to let them do it because this was just the sign that they were rejecting the lord and if they did this then the judgments that the lord said would come upon them would come to pass And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that asked of him a king. And he said, This will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for himself, for his chariots, and to be his horsemen, and some shall run before his chariots. And he will appoint him captains over thousands and captains over fifties, and will set them to, to ear his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his instruments of war, and, to, and instruments of his chariots. And he will take your daughters to be confectionaries, and to be cooks, and to be bakers, and he will take your fields, and your vineyards, and your olive yards, even the best of them, and give them to his servants. He will take the tenth of your seed, and of your vineyards, and give to his officers, and to his servants. And he will take your men servants, and your maid servants, and your goodliest young men and your asses and put them to his work and he shall take the tenth of your sheep and he shall be his servants and he shall cry out in that day because of your king which he shall have chosen you and the lord will not hear you in that day N nevertheless the people refused to obey the voice of samuel and they said nay but we will have a king over us that we may be like all the nations, and that our king may judge us, and go out before us, and fight our battles. And Samuel heard all the words of the people, and he rehearsed them in the ears of the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, Hearken unto their voice, and make them a king. And Samuel said unto the men of Israel, Go ye every man unto a city. And we know the result of that, that led to 
Saul, and then David, and then Solomon, and then Rehoboam, and then the list goes on and on until the people were cast out of the land by the Lord because of their iniquities. And now let's compare this to our day. The idea of a hierarchical leadership is being favored in the United States, contrary to the founding fathers and to the Bible which they believed. And we are treating our political leaders as if they were nobles and nobility. And a new law is being established in this land that rejects mor moral law and is a law that is favorites with people and a law that has unset punishments meaning that you do not know what you will be punished with until after judgment and things are becoming unbalanced and I know that this is because we have rejected the idea that all of all men are kings and that all men are subject unto the Lord and we know this is true because in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, it says, But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So Christ is the head of man, and God is the head of Christ. And man is the head of woman. This is showing the true kingly pattern that the Lord has established. All men are kings, being subject only to God and His law. And Christ is subject to God and His law. And Christ and God are one in unity. Now this means that there is a special relationship between man and woman which must be discussed and it is no longer a popular subject to talk about but it is what God has described and it must be followed. You cannot just take bits and pieces of the word of God that you want. If you do that then the whole law is destroyed. And so, Ephesians chapter 5, starting in verse 22, uh, describes this. It says, concerning the woman, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. So this means that women are to submit themselves to their husbands as the husband submits himself to the Lord wherein if a man is not being doing his best to follow the Lord and is trying to bring about a, a negative path then the woman is not subject unto him because he's not following the Lord but if the man is doing his best and is giving an honest effort, then she is under the law of the man and is to be and to submit herself to his authority. Therefore, as the church as the church is subject unto Christ, the church referring to the men, for the men are the the, the kings within the church. As those men submit themselves to Christ in the church, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. As, as Christ did everything he could for the church, 
and loved it, even to the giving of his own life. So are men to love and give everything, even their life for their wives. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So, Christ came to bring spiritual salvation to the church, referring to the body of men. Now it is the man's job to do the same thing for his family. I mean, a man is to bring spiritual salvation, remembering that only through Christ can all people be saved. But man is to preach Christ and his law and gospel to their families and to save them spiritually by bringing them to Christ. And so ought, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the Church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. So, this is the old idea in the Torah, that man and woman are one of one flesh. And so, if you hate your wife, you are hating yourself. And you ought to treat your wife as you would treat yourself. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the Church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. So every woman is to be subject unto the man, and to reverence him, and to respect him, and to submit herself to his leadership and rule. Every man is to think of his wife as his queen, which he is to provide for and love as himself. As he nourishes himself, so shall he nourish his wife, who is his queen and equal. But man is king and is subject to Christ, who is the king of kings, and that is why they call him the king of kings. It's not referring to political leadership. It is that Christ is the king over all the kings. Every man on earth is a king. And we are subject to the king of kings. And we are to follow Christ like Christ follows his king, his head, who is God. And so that is the idea that needs to be restored in America, that we are all kings and that no man has a right to interfere with another man in his dominion and to do so is contrary to the philosophy that the Lord has and establishes a system of hierarchy which is destructive to our society and will lead to destruction. I'll leave that with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.